Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems, my very biased collection, as usual. Today, actually, is something fun. Well, I hope all of my favorite theorems are fun, obviously. That's why, at least I think, uh, that's why they are my favorite theorems, right? But fun in the sense of something actually really basic, which then generalizes to uh, quite some generalities. So it's actually remarkable. And the theorem itself is called the ax grothendieck theorem. You know? And it's a theorem about polynomials, actually, or certain types of polynomials, we'll see. But um, Grothendieck and co, well, that was kind of the 50s, 60s of the last century, they were thinking in way more generality. So if you want to replace polynomials by algebraic variety, whatever that means, um, it will work eventually as well. Um, so we'll comment on that later on. But most part of the video, for most part of the video, we don't really need to know that. And maybe we don't even need to know what an algebraic variety is in general. Uh, but knowing what a polynomial is, could be helpful, and uh, not just for this video, just a little hint in case you don't know what a polynomial is. Anyway, so certainly if you don't know what a polynomial is, this is not your video. Otherwise, uh, fasten your seatbelts and we get going. So here's my very, very baby case of a polynomial, a linear map. Strictly speaking, these are affine linear maps because they don't necessarily go to zero uh, through zero. But let's just let's just know that. that that's just terminology anyway. Uh, okay, so I have my linear maps here, and you all know how linear maps look like. I have x, I have three x plus two, and I have minus two x minus five, and they do something linear, and that's why they are called linear maps, I guess. And main observation here: they will kind of hit every real number, so they hit kind of um, the whole the whole space, if you want. Uh, just uh, for different values. So I'm certainly not drawing the whole, the whole space. Anyway, they hit every uh, real number unless they are really, really stupid, like something like this. Unless they have slope zero, they will hit any real number. And slope zero, if you just think about it for a second, really just means they're non-injective. So in this case, being an injective linear map implies being a bijective linear map. Sounds pretty simple. Injective implies bijective. And you might wonder, in, in what sense is that true um, in general? So as I said again, as soon as I don't have slope 0, as soon as I have some slope, I will eventually hit all real numbers. So uh, being injective is the same as being bijective here. And the question is, in what sense does this generalize? Well, here's a function I got wrong in my um, analysis class where there was a problem on in the exam. So the arc tongue, the, the inverse of the tongue, tangent function. Now I like it very much, but I somehow got it wrong. I found it very scary. Anyway, it's really not scary. Stay with me here, but it's now a counter example for what I want to do. So the function itself is just this blue thing here. It actually doesn't matter how it is defined. It's just this blue thing. And the point is it's injective. So no two values of x so let me call this function f for a second. So f of uh, x equals f of y implies uh, x equals y. So ooh, this was supposed to be an equal x equals y. So it's definitely injective, but it doesn't hit any real number. In fact, it's bounded by those two little lines, one of them at pi over 2 and one of them at minus pi over 2. So it only hits a certain type of uh, numbers. So this slogan injective implies bijective is not true for this curve. It was true, and it's a pretty harmless curve actually, but it was true for our linear curves, which really, really honestly speaking, are much more harmless than the arc, than the arc tongue function, obviously, but arc tongue is not so bad, and it doesn't fit, uh, kind of fit in this slogan of injective in, inject, uh, implies bijective. And you cannot fix that. I'm showing you a real picture here. So here's my R2. Uh, so it's a map from R to R. Uh, so that's why we have two coordinates. And you really can't fix that by saying, oh, maybe the real numbers are wrong. So maybe let's go to the complex numbers. Actually, this function will be multi-valued on complex numbers. So it gets really, really ugly in some sense. Let, let's not think about it. Anyway, uh, the point is you can't fix that. So it's really just built into the function. So injective implies bijective. It's just wrong for this function. So in general, there's no hope. And this is kind of where the polynomials kick in, if you want. So in the polynomial setting, it will be true again. So here are some of them. Um, so just the monomials, the powers of x, x squared, 
x cubed x to the four x to the five so x cubed and x to the four are like these parabola type things and the um the parabola type objects and the other ones are more this hyperbola type objects so uh the odd powers are always injective the even powers are not injective anyway uh but in this case it's actually true so for the for the even powers we ignore them i just put them on the slide because kind of everyone knows the parabola I hope at least knowing parabolas is very, very important. Um, anyway, but the odd ones are actually injective and bijective. So it really fits again into our little slogan here, injective implies bijective. And you can do that over the real numbers, over the complex numbers, it doesn't really change. So for polynomials, it seems to be true that injective implies bijective. And that's exactly, well, kind of the baby version of the axe gordon -Dieck theorem, so the main topic for today, so um, any injective polynomial function, not just from R to R, but from R to N to R to the N. So here we have really have, uh, well, C to the N or C to the N. You can even do, you can do both. Let me just mention you can do both. I will comment on that in a second. But anyway, any injective polynomial function is bijective. And for higher dimensions, this is really hard to imagine. Um, I have here, so problem with uh, complex numbers is they're already two dimensional. So as soon as I have a map from C to C, uh, so the, the source is two dimensional and the target is two dimensional. So I'm supposed to draw a four dimensional picture and I'm not really good in drawing four dimensional pictures. There's one kind of way to do it. You draw a, draw a three dimensional picture together with color indicating the fourth dimension. Anyway, so if you can see anything in my little polynomial function here, this is an injective bijection in the complex numbers. Uh, point is, you can't really imagine that anymore. So here's kind of was kind of very, very simple. It's kind of visualization exercise if you want. In general, you need a proof. Um, I kind of will kind of tell you a little bit about the proof in a second. And why were Axel Grotendieck in the 50s, 60s in, interested in the statement? Well, first of all, it's cool. I mean, it's a bit surprising that injective already implies bijective. Here's our slogan again, injective and bijective for any polynomial function in R to the N or C to the N, doesn't matter. Um, but even the theorem generalizes for algebraic varieties over algebraically closed fields. So actually it's quite general and it's really just saying polynomials are much simpler than general functions really, really much, much simpler. And it's no wonder that a lot of mathematics is actually built on polynomials because in the end, they're the, kind of the easiest type of non-trivial functions. Anyway, this is a really cool theorem. Um, and it's not really obvious to me how to prove that if you really have an honest N here, because well, an honest N, oh, that's quite large dimension wise, but the proof is actually, Pretty simple, and it fits on the slide. At least the one, I'm a little bit cheating here. I only show you this proof for the complex numbers. This proof for the real numbers is more sophisticated. It doesn't fit on the slide as far as I'm concerned, uh, but it's also true. I just show you the proof for the complex numbers and you will see where the complex numbers come in. Anyway, so let's do the complex version. And there's this really beautiful theorem. It's one of the theorems in mathematics with most known proofs. So people kind of collect proofs of the theorem. Um, because usually the proofs are really beautiful or like uh, really beautiful applications of something very different. And the theorem is known as the fundamental theorem of algebra. It really just says that any non-constant polynomial has a root in the complex numbers. And again, this theorem has many, many proofs. And most surprisingly, it's usually a proof that involves mixtures of mathematics. And that's why uh, people like to uh, collect proofs. And there are even books on this. So he has a book that is really recommended if you want to have a look at the book. Anyway, now let's go to the proof. Obviously on the slide, I will only sketch the proof for you. I leave it to you to fill in the remaining details. And let me just do it for any of this one. Well, let me just do it for any of this one, just because it should fit on a slide. Uh, so fix an injective polynomial. The general proof works quite similar. Fix an injective polynomial. And really injective means that the function uh, pz minus, minus uh, some fixed uh, z0 is not constant. So you can just apply the fundamental theorem of algebra. It's not constant. So there will be a root somewhere. And uh, meaning there's a root somewhere implies that it's surjective because exactly that's the condition of being a root. And that's it. It's kind of a beefed up version of the fundamental theorem of algebra. 
So that's why, um, so that's why those people got interested in it. So the Axe Golden League, uh, well, the people well, Axe and Golden League, and many other people got interested in it because, in some sense, the theorem is a generalization, a higher dimensional version, or even an algebraic geometry version, if you want, of the really lovely and absolutely amazing fundamental theorem of algebra. Anyway, so that's not my story for today. In some sense, the slogan is polynomials are easier than general function. Is that a surprise? Not really, I guess, but the theorem is still uh, pretty remarkable. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.